Known for being gentle, very affectionate, energetic, and eager, the Visla combines the characteristics of a pointer and a retriever and absolutely loves to hunt. The Visla is originally from Hungary, which explains why the breed is also called a Hungarian pointer. Coming up on this edition of the Paw Report, we'll talk more about this lovable dog and its active lifestyle. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Power Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, Authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sale Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com. And thank you for joining us for this edition of the Paw Report. I'm your host, Kelly Runyon, and I'm joined today by two special guests. The guest on my lap, it, my lap is Ruger, and uh, we're going to be talking about you all episode long. And <laughs> Terry Rofing, he joins us from Muhammad, Illinois, and he comes to us from Mich Mission Missile Lock Kennels. Thank you so much for joining us today. What a pleasure. It is We a had privilege. so much fun getting set up today and letting uh, Terry brought with him Ruger and a couple of puppies. And today we're going to talk about Vislas. Did I pronounce it correctly? That's close enough. Yes, well, introduce absolutely. introduce yourself to the viewers, Terry. Tell us all about you. I'm Terry Rolfing. I live in Muhammad, Illinois, and I've raised Vislas for about 20 years. What is the... Um, you know, when I was explaining how I came across you and your dogs, I was actually doing some research on sporting dogs, and I came across the Visla. So what, what is the origin of this, this pup? Obviously, he's lovable. <laughs> <laughs> well, they date back to the time of the Magyars in Hungary. Uh, they just barely made it out of World War I and World War II because the Germans were killing them off to... Uh, um, demoralize the people because the people are so attached to them. They're an upland game hunting dog, although my son's used his on ducks and geese and whatever else also, but um, they, they, they're, they're Hungarian. And hence, their other name is the Hungarian pointer. Am I correct in yes, that? Yes, yes. But for the most part, people know them as the, the Vislas. Yes. Why do you think that they are, <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious uh, why they might be one of the more popular uh, breeds, uh, according to the American Kennels Association. In fact, they're 31st out of 189 dogs are, are breeds. Okay. Why do you believe that they're one of the most popular? They want to please. They are, for the most part, a very gentle dog. They're, they learn very easily. Uh, they, the looks, the intelligence uh, of this animal is just phenomenal. And I'm very, very blessed to have uh, uh, some of the best pedigree uh, around right now. Um, they're, they're usually a size 40 to 60 pounds. Uh, uh, golden rust is their color. And uh, they're great with children, very trainable, uh, protective. <clears throat> I didn't realize how protective they were, but I sold one to a lady here in Champaign, and uh, she fell out of the boat. And, you know, she, it wasn't deep water, but, you know, she was trying to get up and whatnot. And another stranger came over and was going to help her. You know, the dog got between him and her and uh, tried to protect. But uh, they just want to please. How, how were you introduced to to this breed? When, and how long have you been how long have you been training and loving on this breed? <laughs> okay, uh, I think when I first got married, uh, I wanted a hunting dog, and I found one that was half lab and half Vishla, and uh, liked what I saw and had, and uh, later on uh, decided to go into the Vishla business, but that was because of my son because then I got a full-bred Vishla, 
And he said uh, something like this, uh, don't you wish everybody had what we have in our dog? And I thought, well, there's a monetary uh, gain that could be, could happen. And plus to give people what we have for them to enjoy what we have. And that's what kind of got us started in the business. I understand there's a story behind Ruger here. Everybody loves Ruger. Um, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're speaking of my daughter. Oh, yes. Um, and my granddaughter. My daughter came, she wanted to take him home, but my granddaughter came uh, a couple of years ago, 15 maybe, 2015. And she was afraid of dogs. Didn't want anything to do with this dog. No pet, no feed, not under the chin, nothing. By one o'clock the next day, he, don't, he doesn't jump on you, he doesn't knock you over, anything like that. She had invited him on her lap and was loving him and, every, and her little sister also. But be, because uh, he's a super, uh, has super temperament uh, disposition, as you can see, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's, that's what I love about him. But I was told his father was the same way. Aw, well, and that leads me into my next question. You kind of answered it, but what gives you the most joy about this animal? Uh, obviously seeing your granddaughter and how she interacted with it, but you just smile from ear to ear when you talk about this dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer I'm gonna give you, the first one is weddings. Wedding. And I thought you'd be surprised with that. What I like about this dog is weddings. Weddings. We've been invited, you know, I, t I kid people, single people who buy a dog from me, you know, be careful because you're liable to get married within the next year. You know, it's, it's easier for a guy to talk about the dog than, you know, and so anyway, then they relate to each other, the man and the girl and, mm -hmm. and man. But uh, weddings, we were invited to a couple of weddings. We did go to one. One was further away, and we did pass on that. But, uh, um, but again, you know, it's what my son started out with, you know, to give somebody else uh, a dog with the hunting and the disposition, uh, to see the joy and the notes that come back uh, from people. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a gal buying from me now from Wisconsin. She bought from me 14 years ago. Then she bought from somebody else. Okay. She called me up here this spring. Terry, we want to buy another dog from you. And then she told me this story, but she says, you know, yours are the best. Mm. I had another guy come who's buying. Uh, he's looked all over. I mean, he's gone to kennels here, here, here. And he said, Terry, you have the best. Um, you know, it makes you feel good and, and to know that you're giving a person a quality animal. And I also try to equip them to succeed uh, in, uh, with their pup that uh, be a great companion. And you brought such. some pups along with you today. Yes. And, and I was saying, it just seems like <clears throat> as young as they are, and, and they're little, you, you brought some seven week olders, yes. they just know to point because they were running around here <laughs> in the studio and they started to point. So how do you, we're going to talk about their temperament and their um, markings and that sort of thing. But how do, how do you train them? What is the kind of the process? What is your day? One of the things that I suggest, and not every book agrees with this, but is to give them a power role where they are laid on their back in a submissive position and you just hold them there until they stop squirming part of training. I'm the human. I went out to South Dakota to see my granddaughters. They had gotten, you know, I'd given them a dog and they had him on his back and she was saying to him, I am in charge. Mm -hmm. I am in charge. I am in charge? <laughs> anyway, uh, she was doing that. And I'll just show you, ju I'm just not, I'm not going to be detailed, but, but to sit. I always thought before, you know, you just push on the haunches. But no, another person said, you know, th that, that neck is connected to that backbone back here. So if you want to sit, you do that. Also, if puppy comes up and scratches on you once up, mm -mm, that's a no-no. Puppy, sit. And so puppy sits before. Otherwise, if you reward them for scratching 
and jumping on you, that's not good. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's just a couple of things. <laughs> Should I just put her down? Well, Terry, while you've got her, talk about their um, the breed standard. Like what, you know, when, when somebody's looking to get a purebred uh, animal, whether okay. it's a Visla or any other breed, mm -hmm. what, are the, what is the breed standard for, for this particular mm -hmm. animal? Okay, it's almost easier to say what, uh, what is what you don't want. You don't mm -hmm. want a black nose and you know, brown nose. Well, dirty nose is okay, I guess, <laughs> but uh, in, any, in any case, you don't want a black nose. Uh, white, uh, that's too much. You know, she has a little bit of white down here. Um, but uh, like Ruger, he's about 22 inches high. From he, to yeah, the yeah, to the back, from yeah, from to the yeah withers, back. to the mm -hmm. withers, withers, yeah, right. Um, he weighs, I'm going to say about 45, 46 pounds. Uh, the weight will vary from like 40 to to, to 60 mm -hmm. on some, but uh, you know. What about their hindquarters and? and their head their head uh, people well the standard is for it to be boxy but yet kind of slim down i know some people are breeding a longer nose eh, that's not right some are breeding for really dark colored that's not right either mm -hmm. but uh, very muscular neck head and and all the way down the back there too and they're always this golden rust color. Yes, they should be There's golden one rust, color, right? You know, some breeds yeah. they have If they're yellow or black, again, that's uh, that's no good. Uh, that's a disqualification, as such. So, one of the things um, in in my research about the breed is they love to hunt. Um, that's you know, aside from being just people pleasers, mm -hmm. uh, they do love to hunt. And and you were saying that you do run them and and they do like various animals yes uh, for the most part you know the quail and pheasant would be number one uh, with them for hunting but yet we use them in uh, Minnesota uh, on ducks and geese and uh, well there's some other birds there too mm -hmm. but uh, uh, you have to be careful because they are short hair like in Minnesota you know when you start getting ice on the lakes that's time to quit you know, for them uh, as such. But uh, the honey is natural. You know, the, there's a couple of different things. You know, the pointing, the honoring, that means if there's another dog up there already pointing, th then this dog back here doesn't rush in and scare the, the animal up, but he backs him back behind. And of course, the retrieve to, to get the bird and bring it back to you, uh, to your hand as such, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. Do they have any, uh, you know, we kind of talked about their temperament, good dogs, family, okay. pleasers. Uh, do they have any funny habits, any ticks about them that, that are maybe different? You said before Vislas, you, you um, raised Britneys. Uh, yeah, I, ha I had a Brittany uh, as such. Um, I don't, know, I don't know exactly how to answer this question, but uh, what I enjoy, you let them out, you know, and they run around. And if there's two out at a time, okay, George will chase Mary, three-fourths around. Nope, we turn around, we go back the other way, and it's vice versa, and they, they uh, take, take turns uh, chasing each other as such. Um, but... Uh, They're just all around happy yeah, dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about uh, any sort of um, health issues that you've noticed with this particular breed? You know, larger breeds, sometimes they're prone to different things. Um, smaller breeds too. Uh, but in your years of, of raising and training, have you noticed anything, not necessarily about your dogs in general, <laughs> but just, just this particular breed? Uh, someone told me once, if you breed long enough, you're gonna see everything. Now, hip dysplasia is a, a very common one and yet I can't say that. I've never seen it in my, my parents or any of the pups that have come from me, nor in anybody else who's in the Vichel Club of Illinois uh, as well. Uh, cancer, uh, melanoma, or lymphoma, I guess, is, is one thing. Uh, but uh, uh, but there, there, there's, there's a couple different ones. But you've just such. not personally experienced it yourself. No, I did 
you know, there's there's other things too. I I kept a pup out of my one of my last litters a couple of years ago, and great temperament. Her eyelids grew in instead of out, so I couldn't allow anybody to have full mm -hmm. registration. And um, a guy from Maine was in Chicago, saw my ad. I told him about you know what the situation was. He appreciated my integrity, and thus Ruger. He introduced me to some of the top breeders that I would not have known about and, and, and have uh, the most wonderful mm. uh, bloodlines uh, today. So, Does this particular breed have any grooming? Um, you know, I know oh, that yeah. they spend a lot of time outside, but, you know, they, they have short hair. That's another one of their mm -hmm. standards is not long and curly. It's very, I think, I think we have a puppy plant eater back in the back. Uh, he's, puppy, chewing puppy. On, he's trying to chew on the oh, chair. Oh, you're trying to chew on the cord. Yeah. So if you don't hear me out there, we can blame the little pup back <laughs> behind us. Um, do they have well, any grooming, some, brushing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you want to care for your dog as, as best you can. And, of course, you know, brushing them off. You know, every once in a while isn't a bad thing. Uh, maybe once a month, check their teeth. You can use a toothbrush, as a matter of fact. Uh, Q-tip, but be careful around the ears. You know, mm -hmm. Q-tip to clean out the ears. After hunting, especially look at their underside and, and their feet to see where there's cuts and whatnot. So that one's after your cord <laughs> over there. But yeah, there are things uh, that you should check uh, and and that's good, too. You know, one of my customers said, uh, play with their feet. Now, why would somebody say play with their feet as a pup? Mm -hmm. Well, who's going to care? The vet's going to care. Play with their feet. Play with their teeth. You know, do all these things. So when they go to the vet, eh, okay, this guy's playing with my feet and my teeth. That's nothing new. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and give me a shot. I'm not going to cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but there's, there's different things, and those are things that I suggest to my customers as well. What about um, life expectancy? I'd say about 11, uh, 14 years, although uh, uh, the first one that my son had, I think he was 15 when he mm -hmm. uh, left us. So, but uh, it varies. Take me through uh, an average day uh, <laughs> at your home when you get up and kind of your regime with the dogs. And, and maybe, you know, talk a little bit about the, the training that, that you do. <clears throat> well, for the most part, God has put into these animals, you know, the hunting, you know, to point, uh, to uh, back, and to retrieve. Um, <clears throat> I like to walk them around. I make sure that each pup that I have has gone through doggy class. Um, and, you know, they, they teach them sit and stay and, you know, all that other kind of stuff uh, as mm -hmm. such. So, uh, but uh, for the dog's day, they're mostly out in the backyard. Uh, mine are inside once in a while, but I, I like my pups to be exposed to everything outside. You know, it's like a child that never goes outside and then once he does there's all these things that hit him and he's sick from this and that uh -uh. you know you, you want an animal that that's inside and out mm -hmm. and can do well um <clears throat> but uh you know they they run around they eat they sleep they tussle with each other and you know check to see if there's a bird if there is we'll go up and we'll point it and then we'll chase it out of the yard, and we got to make sure about the squirrels too. You know, mm -hmm. uh, nobody's allowed near the bird feeder, uh, so you know they have some entertainment outside as well. <laughs> you know, Terry, I remember not too terribly long ago we did an episode on American greyhounds, and much like this, we brought some greyhounds into the studio. They were with their handlers, mm -hmm. and naturally, when you think of greyhounds, you think of all they want to do is run and play <laughs> and jump. Uh, run specifically, but their handlers said just the opposite, that really they're couch potatoes or blanket <laughs> potatoes. What about the activity level of the Vislas? Do they, are they runners? Do they want to play? Do you have to have, do they need a lot of exercise? Yes. Um, they, you know, they're one of the top 10 dogs uh, for people who run or ride a bicycle with, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, they, they do, mine are kept in a kennel, let them out three times around. 
they have to wear it off. If they're inside, they need to go out every once in a while, run it off. Mm -hmm. And that makes for a better dog. And uh, if you take them to the park or uh, for bicycle ride or, or one of those kind of things, you know, walking, running, great companion for that. You know, Ruger seems kind of part partial to me. Is it a female thing? Uh, <laughs> he's, he's been on my lap the whole time. He's just a lover. You know, just um, be careful because he may ask you for your purse Aww. and your driver's license and, and the car number. keys. Yeah, yeah, he'll, <laughs> he'll steal your heart. Somebody told my granddaughter, you know, he'll, I guess I did. I, you know, he'll steal your heart. And she looked at mom and said, will he really steal my heart? <laughs> but um, no, God has, God has blessed me with a super mom and dad yes. uh, as far as temperament. Uh, I mean, the hunting God put in there, the, the, and, but the temperament, you, you got to make sure that that's there too. Because you're not going to hunt day and night, 24 hours. You want a home companion. Mm -hmm. gets well with the gets along well with the baby and the young children and so forth and so on so if somebody is new to the breed and has never had you know normally when people they fall in love with a certain <coughs> type of dog and then it just seems like over time that that's what they normally have mm -hmm. but let's say that somebody is trying to maybe think about maybe they they see us they see this episode or maybe they've just come across it you know somewhere on on the internet and they think they want to bring this type of dog into their home what should they do and how should they prepare before they just actually bring a pup home well of course there's a lot to read on the vishla of right. course uh they um, could look at akc uh gun dog pets for you those some of those sites uh i would say make sure that the mom and dad are are on the site uh look for customer comments uh, uh and that the breeder answers your questions uh, how long have they been in business what, do they have the integrity do they want to improve the breed some of those things guarantee is there a health guarantee okay make sure um, and it's probably best if they just have one breed to take care of as such and uh, just the vishla for me what about if if the home has other dogs or do do vislas get along with other animals um or do they do they play nice with others or would they <laughs> prefer uh, a place where it's, they get all the attention like this one <laughs> no these dogs will steal the other guy's toy and <laughs> never give it back no they uh, you know the animals will get to know each other and it doesn't take long uh we brought uh, a female home with the cat well you know how that goes you know, chase you, chase me, and so forth. Well, the cat, you know, she'd let him chew, well, not chew, but aggravate her, and then she'd go hide, and then the dog would lose track of her, and he would walk by, and suddenly he gets attacked. <laughs> and so, you know, you know they're, the, you know they're friends. Cat and mice. Yes. Cat, cat and mouse game. Yes, yes. Terry, we've got about a minute uh, before we wrap up our conversation today. And as we wrap up, uh, what is... Uh, how can we end this and, and how can you wrap up just your joy and experience with these dogs? The versatile Velcro Vishla. Versatile because, you know, you can do all kinds of things, the hunting, the agility, um, good citizen. There, there's a whole number of activities that you can participate in. The Velcro, you know, wherever you are, that's where they want to be. Uh, I know one family I sold a pup to, you know, they spoiled her. The dog is in the shower with them, you know, in the car, <laughs> everywhere, you know. And, and the Vushla, my customers tell me two or three things about them. They, they feel they're very intelligent, uh, they're very regal, and uh, one of the, some of the best temperament uh, in the world. So uh, I've, I've been blessed with, uh, with what I have and want to pass it on to somebody else yeah and well, you, you may have passed it on to me I think, just, <laughs> I think old Ruger here has stole my heart and the two pups that have joined us are just you know as I said to you what puppies aren't cute but boy these two are really cute <laughs> Well, thank you. That's that's what God has put into uh, them also. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us, Terry. We sure appreciate you bringing Ruger and your other two little pup Vislas to the mm -hmm. show today. And we look forward to you uh, joining us and great things to happen with you. It was with a pleasure and, and a privilege to be here. Believe me. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you for the honor. You are welcome. And thank you for joining us, Ruger. And of course, we thank our viewers for always joining us here at the Paw Report. We'll see you next time. If you're a veterinarian, trainer, groomer, specialist, rescue organization, or shelter that would like to partner with the Paw Report by providing expert guests for the show, please contact us by emailing weiu at weiu.net or call 217-581-5956. If you have a topic you'd like to see on the show or questions for our experts, contact us with those too. Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sale Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Power Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, Authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston.